Praise God. Praise God, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, right now we'll be praying, so please can we be on our feet? What an amazing presence here. Amazing, amazing presence. You know, I'd like to reiterate uh, what Pierre said last week. He said, um, there's a heart posture to worship. So I don't want, I want us to get into it very quickly as we pray this morning. And let our hearts connect to it. Lord, we exalt your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let sweet word come out from your mouth to God. Lord, we worship you. Father, from January up until now, he has kept us, and we can see, and we can, when we know of his love, so let's rejoice in his presence today, hallelujah. Don't wait for a song, you can start dancing unto your king.
the Lord. Joy overflows. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I, I will praise your name. I worship you. I will worship you. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Salvation! 
to be in church expectant in God's presence this morning hallelujah Amen. hallelujah well let me high five your neighbor and you may be seated in God's presence glory to God good to see you in church and welcome to church this morning good morning everyone I hope you're excited to be in church if you're not create the excitement this morning um, I love it I love it if you're excited to be in church keep it somewhere. If you're not excited, create the excitement. Oh yeah, no. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so this morning, we have some amazing people joining us online, and we want more people to join us online. Could you please uh, share the link? If you have it, you can share it. If you do not, um, it will be on the family group. One easy way to share it um, is to go on the Go on YouTube, look for um, We Are The New. Um, when it comes out, um, all you need to do is share the link to the latest video that the is online. Church. Yeah. The New yeah. Church on YouTube. Yes. Uh, and you'll be able to share the link on your WhatsApp, on Instagram, on, on X, and all the social media platforms that you may be on. So we'll just give you a few seconds to please do that. Let's get the word out to as many people as possible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to be looking at our devotional uh, for today. Our devotional, we have a daily devotional um, written by our founding father and pastor, Dr. Kaide Jishesso himself. And we're going to be looking into that this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today's uh, topic says, stay covered. And I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 4 verse 11, the New King James Version. It says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Dr. K says, one of the greatest tragedies of this generation is the failure of the church and the world to take full advantage of the fivefold ministry gifts. There are uncommon supernatural rewards attached to the ministries of prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and apostles. These people are not just babysitters of the saints. Hallelujah. Rather, they are reward carriers from God. Don't be robbed of your reward. Make sure you connect to the ministry gifts that God has se separated for your elevation. No more compromised destinies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And how many people agree that we have gifts in the house? How many people agree that I have gifts in this house? Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Dr. K is charging us to stay covered by being connected to those gifts, right? The reason why God gave those gifts, the Bible says, and he himself, um, the reason why he gave those gifts is because of our coverings, because of our benefits, it's because so that we are covered, we are amply supplied in everything that we will need. Hallelujah. So, so, so uh, stay connected to the gifts that we have in the house, the ministry gifts that we have in the house. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to take a declaration where this is concerned. Um, so you just say after me, right? 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 All right. So uh, I submit myself to God's local church system. I am adequately covered edified and deployed to fulfill God's purpose. I am well planted in God's house and flourish in his courtyard. Let's take that again. I am well planted in God's house and I flourish in his courtyard. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And one of the ways, you know, just very connected to what we just read is uh, the whirlwind of testimonies we've been having um, over the last two weeks. How many people have been part of that? How has it been? Glory to God. You see, that's one of the ways we stay connected and stay covered under the ministry gifts that the Lord has given to us. And I want to encourage you, just in case you've been missing out on the whirlwind of testimonies that happens 
every morning, um, Monday to Friday at 7 a.m. for just 30 minutes, right? So um, it's like that morning dose you just take to start off your day where we have our global lead pastor, Pastor Shola Kodua, just pray for us and declare God's word over us. So I want to encourage everyone to please be a part of that. 7 a.m., Mondays to Fridays on YouTube. Um, pray along with our globally pastor, Pastor Shala Kodua. And take seriously the declarations, the confessions, everything, you know, that he commands us, asks us to do. Remember the miracle at the wedding of Cana. All Mary said to those servants is whatever he says to you, do it. And experience the miracle that they've never seen before. And I believe that in the new, we're set for some exponential, explosive miracles. Hallelujah. And they are coming in already. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you want to share? Hallelujah. The Bible says we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimonies. Right? So we have some people that share their testimonies. And I will just read. Uh, so this person says, during the whirlwind of testimonies on Friday, 29th March, P.S. said we should dance and say thank you, God, for my, for my whirlwind of testimonies in any area you want. I began to dance and thank God for my cousin who, who had been missing for over four days. I precisely mentioned same day before 12 noon. I got a message at exactly 11.47 a.m. that she was found in Enugu. I give God all the praise. She was found safe. <laughs> Guys, guys remember that we overcame him by the blood of the lamb in case you're wondering who it is the devil so as we read this i want you to understand that if god did it for someone he's in the neighborhood right he can do it for me as well so the next one says i'd been applying for internship uh position since last since november last year uh, and i hadn't gotten any during the course of the whirlwind of testimonies last week i received instructions to send my application letter to a place that didn't exactly make sense to me. I reluctantly called someone on Tuesday this week to find out information and it's to find out information and it sounded too good to be to be true. I sent in my application on Wednesday and I was called in for an interview on Monday. But during the whirlwind prayers on Thursday, I decided that I had waited so long and my internship was now. Guys, like she this person said, I decided I had waited so long and my internship was now. I declared like P.S. instructed that I didn't want an interview on Monday but a job. Do you guys hear what I just said? Like this person was not like, oh, let me go for another interview. It is, I am going for an interview and I want a job. A job. A few hours later, I got an email that the owner of the hospital wanted to interview me herself and she rescheduled for the next Friday. After the interview, I got the job and was asked to resume on Monday if I could. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you guys something. More of this can happen. And I believe for you that whatever it is you're trusting God for, don't be quiet about it. Remember what we said about tongue and tongues. You will use your mouth and declare. If someone had a testimony, I will have mine. Let me tell you, your testimony is coming this week. How do you share it with us? Just share with us at the um, new experiences at we are the new dot org. New I expect you to write it down because you're writing it by faith, guys. New experiences are we at the new.org. And remember, Whirlwind continues on Monday from 7 to 7.30. Set your alarm so that you will receive your testimonies. Um, thank you guys for listening to us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I can hear you, church. Hallelujah. Let me look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you happy to be in church? Let me turn to them again. Ask them. Get a response. Get a response. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell your neighbor, you look so good. Like my son would say, he say, you look so cute today. Let me turn to them and say, you look so cute today. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right, we're going to pray in a few minutes. All right, um, just before we receive the word this morning. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray. But before we do that, I want to encourage everyone again um, to please share the link to this service. If you truly have been blessed by the words, you know, um, that have come out of this house from our prophet, from um, our global lead pastor. Um, please, you would want to do that this morning. So I want to give you one minute or 30 seconds, all right, if you haven't done that already. So please share the link to service, all right? Um, if you're on the family group of the church, you can go there. The link is right there. Copy out the link. And if you're not, you can go on YouTube, search for the new church, and, you know, you could just copy out the link. There's a share button down, down the screen. You can copy it and you know share on your status and everywhere all right so let me ask and if you're online you know we'd like you to do the same thing all right just share the link wherever you are somebody somewhere needs this message today hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah all right why not lift your hands to god this morning in a few minutes that we have let left you know just before the word comes out this morning I want you to set your expectations just in case you came in here today without any expectations to God. You know, um, you just strolled into church or, you know, you dragged yourself to church. In the next few minutes that we have, can we consciously lift our hands to God this morning? Can we consciously lift our hands to God this morning and begin to set our expectations to Him? Let's set our expectations to Him this morning. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. What have you come to meet Him for today? What are your expectations before him today? Oh, thank you, Father. Every time that we come into his presence, we are never left the same way. Make sure that you're speaking to him this morning. Make sure you're setting your expectations this morning. Come on, church, go ahead and pray. If you're online, you want you to do the same thing. You're not just watching. You're not watching a show. You're not watching a program. You have come to meet the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who is able to change your story, the one who is able to take you from point A to point B. And so, if you're here or you're online, why not lift your hands to God in expectation, in adoration, as somebody who is expectant this morning. Lord, we look to you. Scripture calls him the author and the finisher of our faith so lift your hands you have not come to a mere man you have come to the king of kings you have come to mount zion if you need to shut your eyes to focus make sure you're not just staring at me Make sure you are engaging this morning. If you need to shut your eyes, please do. But wherever you are, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, open up your heart to your maker this morning. Scripture says, He daily loads us with benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. Who is ready for their benefit today? Who is ready to receive today? There is a portion. There's something that has been a portion for you in this service. I want to give you a few more minutes to pray, to pray, to set your expectations before your maker. Rikata kapala kata, shebela da bela kata kabeka to, rena mante sharabasha, ekapa kata. We have come to the one and only true God, the one who can change. Rekopse pakata, lena mante palatoshe, rikada bala kata kata, ira da bala gasho, ike belekete, ira na makasha, rekonde ba, ayayaya. Somebody begin to pray. Lord, let your word find a fruitful ground in my heart. Scripture says that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. 
Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice. Say, God, let your word in there bring light. Let it bring light. Let it bring light to my heart. Let it shed light to every situation. That's the power of God's word. That's the power of God's word. That's the power of God's word. Reconde pante pale koshe pantaya. Rekabalagada gabagada. Rekoshe ikebelekete. I don't know what part of your life you need the light of God to shine through. Today, this morning, right here in this service, God is more than able to do exceedingly above all that you can ever ask or think of Him. Rekobokosha. Ayayaya bakoshe palata. Rekabakata kapa. Lene menonte. Shile de bakata. Rekabakate. Shile belekete. I want to help somebody tune their mind, tune their hearts. And one of the ways that we do that in expectation of what God wants to do is by praying and setting our expectations before Him. So you're not just opening your mouth to pray, you are indeed preparing your heart for a word in season that is about to change your life. So lift your hands, lift your voice. Reko sheta pante lika balatasa ayarata palekoshe ina mato pelete shibere de bokoshe ayayayayaya reka pakate ke pelokoto ayala koshe pelekata kata riga balakata ayala tapakata shebeleke deke de iyala bakate ke pelekete roko bokoshe. Hey, I, I have 30 more seconds. Say, God, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Lord, I'm ready. 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 Sheke peleke te kopo kosta. Ay, 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 ay. Rekonde balagadasha. Se palate palarabasha. Alaka pate ke te ke te. Subre de bante. Like benento. Sublene manta, aya kapate, shele ne belokosha, aya te pala te pala te pala te pala te, shibre ke belokonte, aya kapa ya pala te sha, rakosha ya kapela kata, reka bakata kapa kata, rekonde balante. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Rena mana mana kata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands, everyone, to heaven. Oh, We're gonna sing this song just before. Holy, holy God. It's a privilege to work. Come on, church, lift your hands, lift your voice. A maker of all. I can't hear you this morning. Lift your voice, church. It's an honor just to stand be Holy, holy. Come on, lift your voice, church. Holy, holy.
to God this morning with Jesus joy can you welcome our global lead pastor as it brings us God's word a word in season come on church if you're online why not celebrate our global lead pastor come on make it louder For me, I can take it, but if that's for God, we can praise the Lord again. Like I said, if that's for God, um, that's questionable, but if that's for me, then I can accept it. So let's try one more time. Put your hands together for me. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I like that. Praise the Lord. Remember what I taught you on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, pardon me. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed of the Lord? Can you tell it? Can you say it? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. If you are redeemed of the Lord, put your hands together for that Lord that redeemed you. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, All right. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you look so beautiful. It's quite clear. Talk to the neighbor. It's quite clear that God loves you. And his hands is upon your life. I can see it. Can you see it? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, Pio, I just came here now and I can see 41 minutes already. Okay, they are just doing their own. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, this is a supernatural army. We are men of the word, men of the spirit, and we are committed to God's plans and purpose for our lives. We take our place in God's supernatural army and his agenda for the earth and our generation. And what do we do next? We enjoy to our In other words, wherever we are, there has to be the sound of joy. You know, one of the things that you must see when joy is in a place, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. One of the expressions that God is amongst you is the expression of liberation and liberty. And that comes from the sound of joy. Glory to God. This is not a graveyard. This is the church of the living God. Hallelujah. It is righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Are you in the kingdom of God this morning? Can you show some expression of joy? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. story of Zacchaeus. How many of you remember that story? Um, he heard that Jesus was passing by and he had his own um, shortcomings because he was a short man. So, <laughs> amen. 
Amen. That's deep. <laughs> and he couldn't, you know, see Jesus. But he wanted to see Jesus. You know, there, there is a desperation that you must have whenever you can smell his presence. He only heard that Jesus was passing by. And he said, if he's passing by, I want to see who this person is. And the Bible says, he went up to a sycamore tree. He went all the way down. He went against his disadvantage to create an advantage for him. And at the moment he did that, Jesus saw it. You know, there are things that in services, Jesus spots. And one of the things that Jesus, is, Jesus would always spot is your thirsts and your hunger. He can spot it. So everybody can stay on the shallow ground, but who is that Zacchaeus who would say, I, 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 don't, I don't care what is going on. As long as Jesus is around, I want to see him. Yes. And so the Bible says Jesus looked at him and said, come down. Instead of you staying afar off to catch a glimpse of me, I would eat in your house today. Yes. You, see, you see that? There's a principle behind that. The principle behind that is hunger and tests would always bring to you the very things you have been looking at from afar. It will bring it closer to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hunger and tests. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So lift your right hand and say after me this morning. This morning. I'm talking to a supernatural. I'm saying this morning. This morning. I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. And I know, I know that whenever, whenever the, word the word of God is present, it will change my life. Change my life. So I'm open, so I'm open. Receptive, receptive to the word of faith, the word of faith. That, is that is able to transform my life. Transform. This, morning, this morning, I receive the simplicity of the word and I know that my life is taking a whole new turn right here and right now in Jesus mighty name put your hands together for the Lord amen you may be seated glory to God this morning we're going to be talking about a powerful subject and we're going to be talking about what we have titled in the month of April, Honor, the subject of honor. And all through the month of April from this week all the end to the end of April, we're going to be teaching on the subject of honor. At the midweek services, we'll be talking about tongue and tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. However... On Sundays, we're going to be talking about the subject of honor. Now, um, the moment you saw honor, some people just calculated in their mind, like, yeah, um, they, they want to talk, teach us how to respect people and know how to disrespect people and things like that. But, you see, this subject is way bigger than respect or disrespect and, and things like that. It's, in fact, if you look through the scriptures, which we're going to do in a moment, you realize that the subject of Honor is one that you'll find from Genesis all the way down to Revelation. Um, it's a very, very critical subject. Um, it's one that you'll see from Genesis all the way down to Revelation. It's beyond respect. It's, that, that, that's, a, that's a part of it, but it doesn't, it's not the totality of it. Praise the Lord. And this morning, we're going to try and explore that. We have four weeks to explore this topic, and that's to let you know how critical and important this subject is, it's not just about great greetings in the morning or good afternoon or good evening or good night, it's way beyond that and um, um, we would go through this and I believe that the Lord would open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. While I was praying, the Lord said to me that many shut doors will be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say loud, Amen. Amen. One of the things I always say is this, if there is a door that is currently shut in your life, if you trace it very carefully, dishonor shut that door. I tell you the truth. If a door in your life is currently being shut, if you trace it very carefully, dishonor shut that door. Dishonor is not about, it's not just about greetings, it's deeper than that. Praise the name of the Lord. And let me say this here as we start. The concept of honor or dishonor is beyond a cultural thing. And many people think that when we talk about the word honor, use the word honor, 
um, we emphasize it more because we are Africans, particularly in this part of the world. The concept of honor, dishonor is beyond just being Africans or being a Nigerian or in your, um, your, your, where you come from. It's way beyond that. It's actually a biblical concept. Glory to God. It's not a Yoruba concept or Igbo concept or an Awusa concept or an overestimation of, of um, a religion or an overestimation of ethnic groups and all that. It's beyond that. It's actually a biblical concept. And I'm going to show it to you in the scriptures in a moment. To show you how from Genesis all the way down to Revelation, one thing you're going to find there is a concept of honor and dishonor. Glory to God. And let me just quickly say this also, that even as we talk about the concept of honor, and I have pro, I've, I've established the fact to start with that it's not, a, it's not a cultural thing. It's a scriptural thing. One of the other extremes, and I want, to, I want to bring a balance to that in a moment before we even start teaching really deep about the subject of honor and dishonor, is the fact that many people with the concept or the general ideology of um, the universality of what we call, uh, 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 what, what's that word again? Help me, Holy Spirit. I just remembered it two minutes ago. What's that word again? You, you don't know the word. It's me that know the word. Praise the Lord. That just ran off my mind right now. Okay, let me talk about something. Else. So come back again. Somebody say, let it come back right now. Okay. Yes, I remember it now. <laughs> Amen. You remember what we talked on Sunday? Our, your tongue brought it back to me. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Now, there is there's a thing where it's general now. Everybody's talking about the concept of equality. And while we understand that there is an extreme side of that concept of equality and why I believe in the generalization of equality whereby man and woman there has to be some sense of being equal and things like that. In context to the subject of honor, we cannot bring that concept of equality totally into the concept of honor and I'll tell you why. Look. The reason why a police officer is wearing the police officer's clothes is because of what we call distinction. We want to be able to show you that this person right here is the one upholding the law and order. Glory to God. And because of that, that garment that he's wearing requires some level of respect and regard for that person or that garment that he's wearing. So in the concept of honor, we are not really talking about the generality of um, equality. Oh, you know, we are just equal. Everybody, we are equal. There are certain people who through the things and the hierarchy and the places God has put them by the season of their life requires some regard to that office. That's why scripture says, honor the king. Now, if you read that scripture very well, when the Bible says, honor the king, you would realize that these were the same king that was causing atrocities to these people. The same king taking them to the jail. But the same king, Apostle Paul went back to say, honor the king. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why we live in a generation where we have to be very careful about certain things. We have to be careful whereby we do not use um, the bracket of our generation as a leverage for dishonor. So you say that I'm a Gen Z and as a Gen Z we talk to people how we want to talk to, how we feel. And just because of the fact that you are a Gen Z, you have now solicited for yourself an excuse of the way to continually dishonor people. But guess what is going on there? You are constantly shutting a door in your life unknown to you thinking that you are excused by the age bracket or the generation in which you have presented yourself in. Honor is a seed of access. Glory to God. Honor is a seed of access. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, are you ready for the word? Are you sure? Spirit of the living God, we ask this morning that you will move mightily in our midst. Speak to our hearts. Incline our spirit to you. Let us see here and know what your spirit is saying to us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. The church says a louder, Amen. Amen. You know, society plays a major role in your understanding about certain subjects. And one of those subjects whereby society plays a vital and a major role is the subject of honor. And one of the reasons why you see that, that there is an attack strongly on the general concept of honor globally is because of the introduction of media. And I'm going to touch that in a moment. It is true that 
the family unit should be the place in which certain values are instilled into the child. But sadly so, we know now that that is really not the place anymore in which certain values are being instilled anymore. And so you can be projected things by seeing a son and a father going out on a, on a date and then the son is literally abusing the father and the father is literally begging the son not to abuse the father. And then you see that, then we snap it and we put it on social media and then we say that um, we've gotten to a, a woke or a woke generation. And so gradually the fiber of the society is being depleted continually because of the projection of dishonor that has related to people as freedom. So we've equated freedom as a concept to give people leeway to dishonor. And then we hide it in a package called equality. Does somebody follow what I'm saying there? But let me say this to you. Every adult problem is an unresolved childhood problem. Listen to, the, to that. Every adulthood problem is an unresolved childhood problem. In other words, when you see certain children, the way they talk now, it's not because they are not schooled, or let me put it this way, it's not because they don't know what to say, but the childhood unresolved problem. In other words, they were growing up and they were talking anyhow, but nobody took that bold step to confront them to say, the way you are talking, you are not going to go far in life by this way. But, you know, that's how I talk, that's me, that's who I am. So they've excused character as the leeway to continually dishonor people. So if you cannot accept me like this, leave me alone. I, I, I want to hold the bound of dishonor in my life to constantly dishonor people because this is who I am. So there are many reasons why people project this thing called dishonor. Now, it is more rewardable online to you. To, have you seen people who have risen by dishonor? Listen, this, listen, when I say dishonor, you are talking about in your mind. Hmm. Listen to this. In your mind, you are thinking, good morning, sir, good morning, ma. It's beyond respect. There's a difference between honor and respect. They are two different things. In other words, you can respect somebody by greeting the person, but not necessarily honor the person. I'm going to show you and define for you what honor really means. What I'm trying to say to you, in other words, I mean no disrespect whatsoever to any group of people, but I just want to put it out there, that honor is a very important thing. In other words, you can choose to dishonor your own body at the detriment of a society that is looking up to you. Do you understand what I'm saying there? But it's acceptable as a fact that yes, I can go to certain shows online, become a millionaire through that show, and once I can come that, I can prove to everybody right now that that's a leeway to grow and go into greatness. And just by that, the fabric of society is constantly being tampered with. Why? Because of a disorientation in somebody's mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The battle from Genesis all the way down to, X, to, to Revelation is a honor thing. And I'm going to show it to you in a moment. Isaiah chapter 14, let's start with that. Isaiah chapter 14. The Bible says in Isaiah 14 verse 13. I'm going to 13 all the way to verse 14. This is Lucifer speaking here. Remember this story. I don't want to go into too much into it because we have a lot of things to cover here. It says, for you have said in your heart, I would ascend into heaven... I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the cloud and I will be like the most high God. This is Lucifer who his place was already set for him. But because of dishonor, before everything was created, you know there is the pre-Adamic existence, which is what we are looking at right here, before Adam was created, the pre-Adamic existence. This is Lucifer then saying, over there in heaven, to say, I'm going to exalt myself, I'm going to ascend above the height of the cloud, and I would be like the most high God. In other words, he played a low estimation on the person who created him. The moment he did that, something, something occurred in the realms of the spirit there, you cannot see let me show you something. Give me two cups there, quickly. Two, two cu glass cups, if I can get another one. Okay, leave it. If you can get one quickly, don't worry. If you can get another one, I, I need another one. Just when you get it, give it to me. If you don't, don't distract me. You can sit down. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, I wanted to show you something there. Now, if, if this honor comes into your life subconsciously the attempt of dishonor into your system is to take your place from you 
So you see that the first thing that you see with Lucifer there. So this, so this dishonor thing has started a long time ago. In other words, his estimation of God started to get attacked. Look, I want to be like this God. I'm going to be like this God. Do you see that there? Now, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, you will see that the very first thing Lucifer came to attack again was to attack the man's estimation of God. In other words, to bring in dishonor again. Everything the devil tries to do from Genesis all the way down to Revelation up until today is to cause you to constantly dishonor God. So in Genesis chapter 2, he came to the, to, to the woman, Eve. Let's look at that scripture. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. That you may eat of it when you eat of it you would surely die this is god talking to adam and eve in other words his word was his strength he was expecting that they held they held strong the words that he spoke to them don't eat of this thing look at this of everything i've created you can eat of everything freely but you see this one leave this one unto me don't touch it then lucifer came the serpent came in genesis chapter 3 and verse 6 if you look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes a tree desirable to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate she also gave with her husband he ate the moment that happened what happened there dishonor was setting again so you see that the fall of man listen to this the fall of man is predicated on one thing dishonor And the redemption of man was also predicated on one thing, honor. Are you following what I'm saying there? Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. If you are the Christ, turn this stone to bread. The same temptation. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, my living is from the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This was what Eve should have known. That if God says you shall eat from every other thing but not of this one, you should know that the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is your living being. It's what you are going to use to live. But the same thing occurred again. Don't, don't, mind, don't mind God, Jerry. Come to the top of the mountain, look at everything. I own everything. Bow before me. Estimation. This concept of honor. So what brought us to where we are, that we needed a redemption, and we needed Christ to come in the first place, was the concept of lack of honor and dishonor. This thing is deeper than good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. I hope you know that even while Lucifer was still there, that thing that was nursing in his heart, to be exalted that night of God. It did not happen in one day. In other words, dishonor is not showing up the day you dishonor that person. Dishonor started showing up as a seed planted on your inside long ago. That's why the Bible says, when sin conceives, it must bring forth death. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Hold on, I'll let you know. And so when it came to Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13, Matthew 3 verse 13. Are you, are you aware that one of the first acts that we see of Jesus in the scriptures was the act of honor? One of the very first acts. This is the word that became flesh himself. Now this word was going to be baptized. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 verse 13. And Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying... I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so for now, for thus it is fitting for all to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. In other words, Jesus was saying that there is a protocol of honor. You are my forerunner. Just because I'm the anointed one Christ, just because I'm the redemptor of the world, just because I was even the one that created you, there is an earthly protocol that we must follow. And that protocol permits that if you, do not, um, if you do not baptize me, the heavens will not open over me. Are you getting what I'm saying there? So he said, permit this thing to be so for now. In other words, Jesus aligned first with the law of honor. It was after he did that, the Bible said, Jesus, God came, come on, came up and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. In other words, the law of honor enacted, created an affirmation from God. 
Are you getting what I'm saying there? Until the law of honor was enacted, there was no affirmation. Think about it. Imagine if Jesus looked at um, John the Baptist and said, listen, listen, listen. Yes, yes, I'm the savior of the world. Come down, let me even baptize you first. Do you know that it would have perverted the original thing? This were the same characteristics of, of, of Adam and Eve. The behavioral pattern of dishonor. The behavioral, the behavioral pattern of dishonor with Lucifer as well. Thank you, Lord. But when it came to the camps of Jesus, you will see that even when it came to man, not just God alone, even when it came to man, there was honor there. Let me tell you something very powerful. Think about this. Please don't, waste, don't miss what I'm about to say to you. In, in the book of Exodus chapter 20, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, if you read it very carefully, maybe we should check it. If you read it carefully, you would realize that that Ten Commandment was a commandment of honor. Four out of it was honoring God. Six was honoring men. Wow. Let's look at it. So that you, so I clear your doubt. <laughs> Let's look at it. Exodus. Go to verse 2. Exodus. This, this honor thing, God does not joke with it at all. Because it was what cost the rakos in the heavens. Let's look at this. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Next verse, verse 3. You shall have no other God before me. Did you see that? Honor. Let's look at the next one. You shall not make for yourself a craved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is it that is the uh, or that is in the water under the earth. Did you see that again? Honor. This is the second one. Let's look at the third one. Let's go again. One, two, ready, go. You read. One, two, ready, go. Now serve them for this is in the iniquities for generation and those. Next verse, verse 6. And keep my commandment. Let's go. Verse 7. You shall not take. Did you see that? You see it again, honor. Honor to God. Are you seeing this? Let's go. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Let's go again. Verse 9. Next verse. Next verse, because of time. Next verse. Next verse. Hold on. You know, the louder we talk, the more quicker we go. Let's do it together. One, two, three, go. So we've seen four where God was talking about honor to him. Now the next six in this commandment was to man. Honoring men. Let's show it here. Honor. Go back there. Go back. One, two, ready, go. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be upon that land which the Lord is giving to you. Next verse, verse 13. Do you see that? You shall not murder. In other words, honor men by not killing them. Let me tell you something. Do you know why there are people who are in prison currently? Because they broke a law of honor. Every person in prison that committed the crime are in that place because a law of honor was broken. And once a law of honor was broke, is broken naturally, you must pay the penalty of it. That's what God was saying here. He says you shall not murder. Now look at another thing. He says you shall not commit adultery. In other words, honor another person's wife by not sleeping with them. It's honor. This is honor here. This is beyond just good morning sir, good morning ma. This explains to you when people say, yes me, I only honor God. Though Four out of the commandment was for God. Six was for man. I will get there in a moment. Next one. You shall not steal. Man, don't take from somebody else. Honor the person by not taking what is not yours from the person. Next verse. Verse 6. You shall not be a fault witness against your neighbor. Next verse. You shall not covet your... What, what, what is he talking about? The principle behind all of this thing is honoring people. Glory to God. Next verse. Now the people da, da 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 Now, so you see that there. Now, there are laws that govern the earth. Are you with me? The same way we have spiritual laws that govern the earth is the same way we have natural laws that govern the earth. Like I'd always use, like you know, the law of gravity. If I stand right here and I want to come down, I'm definitely going to come down if the moment I jump down. Why? Because of the law of gravity. There are laws that govern the earth 
And one of the laws that governs the earth is the law of honor. Are you following what I'm saying there? This is very, very, very important and very, very critical. Now, if you see a downward spiral in your life, I bet to tell you dishonor shut that door. Can you get me my handkerchief in the car? The, I think I have a bigger one. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One time I was praying and the Lord said this to me. He said that, listen to this. He said, whenever you are spiritually bankrupt of a prayer time or fervency in your spiritual growth, he says, I'm going to look into your bank of honor and from there withdraw so that I can keep on elevating you. Everybody has a currency, a bank of honor. In fact, honor is a bridge. Honor is a currency. It is the most powerful currency on the earth. It's more powerful than your dollar, your yields, your pound sterling. It's a currency of exchange. That is why honor is the seed of greatness. Honor is a currency. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And dishonor is the seed for losses. Dishonor. If you want to continually lose in life, just continually sow a seed of dishonor. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark, Mark chapter 6 and verse 1. Mark chapter 6 and verse 1. Let me tell you something now. Listen to this. You can, look at me everybody please. You can lose in one moment of your life. In one moment of dishonor. You can lose in one moment of dishonor. Everything you have built with your life for 10 years. In one moment of dishonor. That is Vashti come outside and dance before the king. And then Vashti says that I'm not coming. And the king says come. Even though you are the wife of the king. In one moment of dishonor, your regalia can be taken away from you. Everything you've built for your in the in the whole time of your life can be taken out because of one moment of dishonor. Glory be to God. 95% of the successes you see in the earth today is as a reason of somebody that decided who to honor and who to dishonor. Are you following what I'm saying here? This thing is deeper than just good morning and good evening and good night. So therefore, like I always say, let me go ahead of myself a little bit. Do you know that you can actually, don't let me go there yet. I'll, I'll take that towards the end. Let me define for us what honor is. Let me define for us what honor is. Write this down. Oh, I was going to read the scripture for us first, yeah? Let's look at that. Matthew, Mark chapter 6 and verse 1. Mark chapter 6 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. Are you there? I taught you how, the Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. What I taught you last week, you didn't, you didn't, you have not converted it. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you a speaking spirit? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. How do I know you're a speaking spirit? The Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore, that we speak. Amen. Amen. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it out loud. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm taught of the Lord. I'm taught of the Lord. And, great and great is my peace. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I hear a voice. Behind me saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The word of God is coming to me to transform my life. In the name of Jesus, I receive the milk of the word right here and right now. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at Mark chapter 6 and verse 1. And when he went out of there and came to an old country, and his disciples followed him. Next verse. The Bible says, and, and when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where 
did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this in which he has given to him? And that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Look, look at this. They were talking about how powerful Jesus was. Now look at the next verse, verse 3. Verse 3. The next thing they said after that, just after the estimation of Jesus, they started to question that thing next. They said, but is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, are, are not his sisters here with us? And so they were offended. The same people who were talking about, look at the mighty thing this man is saying. The next thing they thought about him and said, look, what is even the thing that he's saying? Is this not the person that is amongst us? The same people talking about the might. In other words, they ignored the might for the frailty of man. They decided to look at the carpentry life of Jesus as opposed to the power that he carries. Are you following what I'm saying there? In other words, they had two choices. Every time in life you have a choice. You have a choice to look at the supremacy of God's power upon a person, either your boss, either your family, either your husband, either your wife, either your pastor, or you look at the frailty of that man. In other words, you can be in the same situation where you are looking at the thing that God is doing with that person at the estimation of another person's life, but you now look at that to a point and I say, what is it even amongst many? Let me look at the frailty of that person. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not somebody I knew when I was growing up? Is it not human beings like me? Are we not all equal? That's what they were saying there. And the Bible says, and so they were offended at him. Let's go to the next verse. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives and is in, in his own house. Next verse. Verse 5. Look at what the Bible says. This is one of the saddest, pardon my use of words there, just to try to articulate that thing to you very well. That when it's a, it's a scripture, when you read it, it breaks your heart. It says, He could not do mighty works there except think about this. Is it that he didn't want to do it? It wasn't about him, it wasn't about him, it was about them. Give me those two cups. Let me show you something quickly, please. Quickly, and put water in one when you're coming. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. Look at this water here and look at this cup. Uh, if I want to pour water, this person here is thirsty. Uh, just let's act it. Somebody help, protocol help him hold this one. I don't need the fan. Just hold this cup alone. Amen. Amen. So, tell me your test. Is that how they talk? <laughs> now, if he's testy, eh? You know, there's a law of receiving by that. The moment he says it's thirsty and I have water, I must be on top to pour the water. It must be like this. The positioning will be different. I'm the one that have the water is the one that is thirsty. The positioning must be different. To pour the water like this, sorry. Are you getting what I'm saying? In other words, if he is thirsty, we cannot pour water like this. We cannot be on the same. You see this equality thing I'm talking about? In context to honor must be well defined. In fact, if he's thirsty, there's no way he can want... Give me back my water, please. Oh yeah, you are thirsty. Oh yeah, take water. Try. Try it first. What must he do? He must... He must condescend, not in a negative way. It must, it must, are you getting what I'm saying there? This was exactly, in other words, Jesus had the anointing. It was on him already. But because they were not willing to bring their own cup to the level to receive it, he had the water, but he could not fill them up. Are you getting what I'm saying there? He could not fill them up. Go back to that scripture. Don't take the scripture away, please. Just keep the scripture there for me. He couldn't fill them up. The Bible says, except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. There were scriptures in which the Bible says, and Jesus healed them all. 
not once, not twice. Heal them all. But in this case, because of the tweak that occurred in their heart, what he could do was to lay his hand on a few sick people. Why? Because they decided that I will choose to look at the carpenter's son than to get healed. I will choose to look at the person I married in my house as my wife than to use the grace upon her life to give me wisdom to break me to another level. I will choose to, are you getting what I'm saying? I will choose to backbite about my boss that has gone all his way out to put his life as Rick's by starting that business. You were not there when he started that business. And by the reason of that business, you are getting paid weekly. You are getting paid monthly. Either way. And because of somebody, listen, even if he's an unbeliever, honor him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is somebody following what I'm saying there? Yes, sir. This is very critical. So, just because, you know, the person is a friend, a colleague, you must honor. Honor is the law of receiving. Write it down. Honor is the law of receiving. If a door is shut in your life, like I said, this honor shuts that door in your life. So then, what is honor? This man shared a story, and I want to just use this in context of what you do. John Beveros, I think that's his name. He shared a powerful story. He said one time he traveled and he started ministering, doing a lot of ministry work. And he would get to places and he would try to teach and try to move in the miraculous. But nothing would happen. Nothing would happen, pardon me. He says, one day, he was going to speak for a minister at 11 o'clock, and then at 10 o'clock, by, I think 7 a.m., the minister came to him and said that, I have a prison ministry, and this prison ministry, you know, I go to the prison with all of these people, and I wanted to come and speak at the prison ministry. So he said, okay, before he goes for this meeting, he would go for the prison ministry meeting. So he went there. He said, as soon as he got into the place, and before he started to sing, um, speak. During the worship, he saw the way the prisoners were worshiping, the way they were giving God praise. He was wondering, ah, I've gone to crusades before. I've traveled around the world. This thing is not happening to these people like this. He said he saw the atmosphere to receive from prisoners. You know why? Because prisoners, while they are there, they are being schooled to honor. Do you know that? The reason why they are in prison is the schooling. The reason for prison in the first place is to be schooled to honor. He says, right there, they were worshiping God. And he looked at one of the guys, he was talking to one of the guys after the meeting, and he asked one of the guys, he said, how many years do you have here? And he said, he has three, three years life sentence. Do you understand? Let me explain. Three times, pardon me, life sentence. So, after he dies and he wakes up, he, they must kill him again. Three! Life sentence. And the guy was dancing. And rejoicing. You know why? He was cooled in honor. In that moment, John told him, prophesied over him and talked about how God was going to do many mighty things through him. He didn't even know that he was going to. Many years ago, he went to preach somewhere. And while he was preaching, somebody walked up to him and said, I was the one who you ministered to in prison. I suppose I was supposed to die three times, three life sentences. But what happened? He said, something happened and then I was released. Honor will break the band of anything that holds you down. You know why? Because they were schooled to honor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go and try, make an attempt to talk to a 10-year-old child now. Just make an attempt to correct a 10-year-old child. That's why, parents, you must be very careful. Listen to this. You must be very careful what you are allowing your children to listen to and what you are allowing your children to watch on TV because there's a system curated in some of those things that will constantly make them dishonor. In fact, usually it's in the subconscious of these people whereby, you know, you hear some things, some of these things you are watching, you know, pick up other, and I have no problem with those things, though. But you hear some songs, you hear something say, I see you, this one, that one. They've, they've hidden. There's one song, we stopped my daughter from singing. Something that, I, something like, I don't have it. Johnny, eating sugar. No, Papa, are you sure? Yes, Papa, open your mouth. Ah, ah, ah. The sugar was inside the mouth. 
but the daughter is saying is I'm not eating sugar subconsciously they are singing lies this constantly programming them to dishonor but unknown to you is vibes they are listening to music let them grow let them enjoy the programming that's why media would play a major role in the concept of dishonor and that is the concept that will constantly let people lose their divine place on the earth Somebody follow what I'm saying here? So what then is honor? Since I've said to you that honor is not good money, sir, good money, ma. What then is honor? Honor, I defined it right here and I want you to write this down, is the discerning, esteeming, and regarding the uniqueness of a grace honor is the discerning esteeming and regarding the uniqueness of a grace a gift or abilities on something or someone by demonstrating your value for it let me say that again honor is the discerning esteeming regarding the uniqueness of a grace a gift or abilities or something or someone by demonstrating your value for it so the law of honor here first please don't forget what I'm about to say to you the law of honor here first is what discerning people discerning people that's the first law of honor who is this person beside me? Who is this colleague at work? Who is this friend that I'm very casual with? Who is this father that I have? Who is this mother that I have? Many of you have parents. They grew up. Maybe some of you, your mom is a single mother. Maybe your dad probably went to be with the Lord many years ago. And she devoted her life into deep intercession. Deep intercession. And by the reason of deep intercession, the prophetic on her life has heightened to a whole new level. But just because you came out from a womb, familiarity has cost you from being able to enjoy the grace of that intercession upon her life. So you are struggling all your life because it is mommy anyway. It is mommy now. Mommy, stop calling me. Mommy, stop disturbing me. And there are people who are benefiting from that grace. Listen. Everybody on the earth, God has apportioned certain graces upon their lives. Everybody. Your inability to discern the grace that the person seated beside you carries will cause you to continually struggle in life. Now he explains to you when the Bible says that you should drink from your own systems. In other words, the things that you require for the chapters and the phases of your life are actually hidden around you. The inability for you to be able to discern it is what is costing you from the same place that you are. Is somebody hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Your mom is a deep intercessor. Your husband, the wisdom upon your husband's life is second to none. The strategy upon your husband. People outside will tell you that after your husband has strategy, strategy, or that your husband is visionary, or that your husband knows how to deal with money. He knows how to save. He understands finance. He knows under this, understand investment. But familiarity, oh, he's not my husband. And yet, your finances is having problem. Day in, day out, day in, day out. Then you'll be right there, your wife or your husband will be having Zoom call on how to help other people to put their finance in order. Whereas you, your own finances is in shambles. But your inability to honor that person's grace just because of familiarity is costing families. Honor shuts the heavens from people. I tell you the truth. Honor shuts the heavens from people. You can choose to dishonor your boss at work. Why? Because your boss doesn't know what you know. But let me tell you something. The law is that your boss in hierarchy is above you. And you can just say he doesn't know anything. I'm the one doing all the work here. And while that is true, by wisdom, you must learn how to still honor that order. Are you following what I'm saying here? This is very critical. Ah, dishonor will cost people. It's constantly costing people. Let me tell you this, this thing. There's something that you must understand at the law of life. That anybody, they say it in your Bible, and I don't quite believe in it, uh, that 
when people become a certain way, they want you to become like that. Are you getting what I'm saying there? Now, the devil became who he is now by disobeying a law of honor. He wants you to be like that too by disobeying laws of honor. Glory to God. Esteeming men, discerning them, knowing what grace and what uniqueness does this person carry. Who is this person beyond all the glams? Some of you have friends. You've been friends for four, five, six years. And till now, you have not even discerned who this person is. What graces do they carry? Every time it's jest and chats. Are we going to see in uh, Knox? Is it Knox? Then you order all your, you order all the plates of food. You know what that means? You're eating. But solutions that can change your life. Listen, nothing comes out from the man's heart until you place a demand on it. In other words, solutions are inside people for you. But until you place a demand for it. Let me tell you something. You might be in this room right now looking for a job. If I shut this door and I close the door, take the key home and I say, everybody begin to talk to each other in this place. Begin to talk about your problems to each other in this place. Are you sure? I hope you know that it's very likely that that person without a job, by the time you are walking out of this place, you will get a job living this place. Why? Because the Bible, there is a spiritual law. You drink from your own systems. Everything God wants to do with you is within the borders around you, but you don't know it. So that's why I say, God, if my husband is in Guatemala, God cannot be that wicked. He keeps you all the way in Guatemala, then he leaves you in Oshobo. How does Guatemala, what does light and darkness have to do together? Glory to God. If God is going to do those kind of things by divine orchestration, it will bring it to you. But your wisdom, let me tell you this, your wisdom is usually around you. Go and check the Bible. I said it to you last week, Tuesday. Every time God wants to do anything with you, he would ask you what you have with you. Moses, what do you have in your hands? He did not say, Moses, go home and go and look for what you have. Oh yeah, come and bring me the rod. It's usually what can I look into this person's life at the moment. What do you have with you? I have rod. Drop the rod. Let's work with that one. Jesus, five loaves of bread and two fishes. What do you have with you? We have five loaves of bread, we have two fishes. Okay, you don't have to go and buy five loaves of bread and come back and meet me. Just give me what you have. Woman, woman that wanted um, oil, jar of oil. What do you have with you? We have small oil, want to eat and die. Go and bring that one with you. That's the law. But your inability to see. I hope you know that you can have a quality conversation that can change your life. That's why I'm saying honor is beyond greeting somebody. Honor is discerning conversations as well. They missed what I said there. Your ability to also discern the kind of conversation that is currently going as pivotal to your destiny is honor as well. Honorary conversation. That's why honoring is not just about man and woman. I'm going, this, this teaching is going to be very deep. It's not just about honor, man and woman. Honoring the systems of God in your life. Honoring moments that God brings into your life. Hear what I said there? Yeah. Lift your hands to God. We say, lift your hands to God, wash in worship. You like this. And by the estimation of that, your body posture already says, I'm not willing to receive anything in this place. But in a moment of wisdom that should come by your consecration to God, you lost it unknown to you. Did somebody hear what I said there? Yeah. Honoring moments, honoring conversations, honoring places. Remove your shoe. What does God have to do with the shoe? Why is God telling Moses to remove shoe? He was trying to get his attention of honor. In other words, there are places that you enter, you must comport. That's what God was saying. It's a protocol of honor. You can't go to your boss's office and just sit down on his chair and put your leg on the chair. As I'm talking and saying it now, some of you are already saying, ah, ah, in your mind. They are protocols. So you go to some places and just because there is familiarity. You say, ah, it's my father's own now. I can do it anyhow. Why is your father's own? Can't you put some honor to that thing? Why is your pastor's chair? Why is your pastor's clothes? Why is your pastor's shoes? Why is your pastor's water? Ah, honor is a, is a painful price. I say to you again, if a door is currently shut in your life, dishonor, shut that door. One moment of dishonor can take your place from you. One moment. 
It can take from you the totality of all you've built in your life. One moment. Somebody follow me this morning. Number two, what is honor? Honor is the willingness to place value on someone's difference. It's the willingness to place value on someone's difference. Number three, honor is to demonstrate high esteem, recognition, and regard for something or someone. And that's why honor is not a gift. Honor is a decision. It's not a gift of the spirit. You decide to honor, not that it's impacted on you. We cannot impart honor. You decide honor. Let me say this to you, and I want you to never forget this statement in your life. If there is a common derivative amongst many, the difference of your elevation would be your item honor. Did you understand what I said there? In other words, there is a common derivative, derivative amongst many people. One, two, three, four, five, six, they have the same thing. At the end of the day, the selection amongst the five will be left to one decision. Who is the most honorable person amongst them? Did you hear what I just said there? Honor is the seed of access. When God wants to begin to grant you access, he looks at your honor quotient. And through that honor quotient, it begins to grant you access. I heard a powerful story. A friend of mine told me this. He was going to resign from his job. He was working in oil and gas, one of the biggest oil and gas in this country. At the top, topest, topest level. He was an MDC of the organization then. The moment he was going, this is a very powerful story. Now, he went to meet his chairman that he was going to resign and that he wanted to um, leave the organization. And guess what? He had already got another offer from another organization, which is another top oil and gas company, um, Downward Stream. Is it Downward Stream they call it? Downstream in Nigeria. So he went to that boss and told the boss, I said, that's his own first boss. I said, I'm leaving this organization, but, you know, um, this person, as this so and so person, I'm trying to code the words. This so and so person, you know, has offered me a job, but this is what I want to do. Um, I want to hear your thoughts. He left it with his boss and said, "Let me hear your thoughts," because they were very close. Now you put this in context, okay? Uh, of course, because of the closeness that he had and some of the things going on there. So he went to and dropped with the boss, and the boss smiled and said, "Okay, he will think about it." So he sent him. He gave him the offer letter. He gave him all the documents. Gave him. Gave the boss everything. Said, "Go ahead and look at it. Whatever decision you think I should make." So the boss kept quiet. So he went back. <laughs> Real life story. Went to meet the boss. The boss didn't say anything. Went back. Went to meet the boss. The boss didn't say anything. So one day, he was going for a party in the other chairman's organization. That other one. That one was doing a birthday party. So he invited him to come. He got into that place. The chairman. This is the new organization that he wanted to move to. As he entered to sit down, guess who he saw there? He saw his boss. Where he was coming from. He saw his boss. Then he was almost shivering. Then his boss was smiling. His boss then brought to him the document and said, I understand what's going on. We both drafted this thing for you. I was aware about it. I said, sign it. It's your new boss. Listen, do you know that dishonor, his boss was just waiting for him. Let me see if you, your elevation is in my hands. Sometimes we say my elevation comes from God, but God will use man to sign it. Yeah. Somebody's mom was beating him the other day. Very funny story. I saw it on YouTube. He was crying. He said, God, God. He said, oh yeah, so, oh yeah, take Cain and give God to beat me. That's the mother saying, take Cain. You know Nigerian parents. Take the Cain, give God to beat me. I will show you that there is a jurisdiction. Let me tell you something. Listen to this very carefully. Are you aware that even when man says no, it will take God time. Listen, the Bible says it's the one that works in us both to will and to do. The heart of kings are in the hands of God. It turns them in every direction. But listen, if I want to bless Pastor Bus- the King Busaya right now with a car or with money, and I'm not willing to do it, 
God would only have to take some time. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> God will have to take some time to will my heart, to condition my heart for me to get to that point. Every time he says, only God, listen, nobody has anything to do with my destiny. If God is not going to do it, listen, God is not going to give you any opportunity from heaven. Even though it comes from him, it will use man, it will use man to open that door for you. Disregard that man and watch how God will close his hands. Let me show you something. Let me show you something quickly. Let's go to Genesis. Give it to me quickly. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. Genesis chapter 16. Look, this, look at this now. It says, And Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him a children, and when he, had, when he had an Egyptian maid servant, whose name was Hagar. Next verse. Watch this now. Verse 2. And so Sarah said to Abraham, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham, Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Watch this now. Verse 2. Verse 3. Then Sarai, Abraham's son, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. And after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land, in the land of Canaan, next verse, verse 14, verse 4. Let me just look at this. And so he went in to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that he had conceived, her mistress became despised. In her eyes. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 5. Because I want to show you how God operates. So. And when Sarai said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid unto your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. Next verse. Verse 6. And so Abraham said to Sarai, Indeed your maid is in your hands. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Next verse, verse 7. Now the angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to shore. Next verse, verse 8. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid. Did you see that? What did the angel of the Lord call her? Sarah's maid or Sarah's maid? In other words, what you are named here is what they still see you as. Sarah is made. They didn't change the name. They did not change the name because Sarah, because if you look at it, you would wonder, I should go and marry and I have baby for her. Why are you disturbing me? All of a sudden, you say I'm despising. So the angel of God should take side and say, the person that chants Sarah, in fact, you are the one that we are going to bless now, but still call that Sarah is made. Look at this. This is very powerful here. It says, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. Next verse. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself where? Under her hand. Honor. <laughs> we don't read this one in the new generation, no. Next verse. Now, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply you. You see the condition? If you don't return, no multiplication. Return, then I will multiply you, your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitudes. Honor. 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 Glory to God. Let me begin to wrap up here. The sonor is a bad aroma that will keep the door of favor constantly and permanently shut in your life. The sonor has an aroma. It will keep the door of favor constantly shut in your life. You go everywhere, you are too nasty before everybody. No atom of regard, respect for anybody. You just met somebody for the first time, you're already sizing them up. Sometimes even in your heart. And you see, this concept of honor that is only befitting for those who are succeeding must stop. When success has now become the only purpose, the Bible says it very powerfully. It says, honor all men. All. So we esteem people by how this person is succeeding. So the way you honor, I, there are some kind of people I can't talk to. Even when you shake them, you shake them like this. 
Touch not my anointed. And God in heaven is looking at the honor system at work in your life. And he knows if we elevate this person to a point, this person would use the power that they have to destroy people. The only people that would have access to them. Let me tell you this. Listen to me. The new generation people that God is going to raise, especially in government, will be people who truly love the masses at heart. Not people that want to use the masses. People who truly love them at heart. Particularly people who rose from amongst them. In other words, they had no privilege whatsoever and by the reason of God's hand upon their life, they rose amongst the masses. Their hearts is like theirs. Those are the kinds that you write what I'm saying down. Honor all men. Esteem all men. Let me tell you another story. This person, a person, this man shared a powerful story. He used to be in real estate many, I don't know if he's still there, but he used to be one of the biggest names in real estate. In Nigeria, yeah. Biggest thing in real estate. How did he start entering into this axis? He was the one that started breaking things open in this axis of Lekki that people started coming there. He said a madman, some of you must have heard the story before, a madman pointed to him that he should go to Lekki and go and do business there. A madman. What I'm talking to you about is that being able to discern an honor conversation, how do you ignore a madman? A madman brought wealth and riches to his hands. He met the person and was just talking to the person and said, go to like, madman! You, somebody that is not even mad, cannot be around you. The moment they have slight odor, and you too should not be having odor. Because odor is disclosing, is closing doors of favor in your life. The moment they have, they don't look like your kind, you exempt yourself from that conversation. Even what they ought to bring into your life by suggestions. You shut it down because they don't look like your kind. Because this honor is the tactics to keep people bound from divine destiny. This honor. Once I can set in dishonor into your system, into your heart, whereby I can make you to start no longer esteem people rightly, I can take you down. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at a few scriptures. Genesis chapter 9, verse 18. Genesis 9, 18. We'll continue next week. Genesis 9, 18. Thank you, Lord. Look, it's not old school. It's not a concept of an awoke generation. The Bible says, reproof not an elder. Now, it does not mean we cannot say certain things when things are wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying here? But the, the way it is communicated matters. One time, when I was in secondary school, we sat in a BRT bus like this, and we're going. One old man entered, and he stood. Old man, that man was already in the departure lounge of life already ready to go to go and be with the Lord <laughs> the, man was, the man was shaking the moment I saw the man I stood up I first waited for a few minutes nobody thought to stand up nobody I stood up and told the man to sit down the man I saw it in his face he was shocked this is the level of decadence in honor system in this nation and around the world the man was shocked the people around me were looking at me like, why will you stand up? That you paid for your tea fair. I'm not going to stand up. Oh. So we live in a generation whereby somebody might be paying your salary, but because you are offended, you are constantly conversing about the person that is giving you money to pay tight. The same money you are using to pay tight, the same money you are using to pay offering, the same money you are using to serve God is coming from somebody. Somebody's, somebody's desire to go against a tight, pursuing a vision for the past 30 years, when nobody, everybody went to get a job in his organization, he decided to start an organization, he paid the price for 6-7 years until the thing broke through for him. 
Now, three years, ten years after, pardon me, you are now enjoying the benefit of that organization of somebody else's labor many years ago. But because the person is not doing certain things and you are saying, hey, they did not give us lunch in this organization. Well, me, I'm coming from my friend's business. My friends are going, better go to your friend's place now. They give us lunch and shawarma. And listen, learn this law. Don't discuss anyone in authority. Now, you can have your own side and things might not work in the way it's up. Are you getting what I'm saying? But don't join conversations. Listen, I will show you this. Let, let me show, before I show you, let, let's go to one first quickly. Let's look at let's 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 look at Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Whenever you have reservations, go to your boss directly. Let me, look at me, everybody. Please. There comes a stage in your life, in order for, not to violate laws of honor, you must learn how to have tough conversations. I'm going to, tomorrow, next week we're going to talk about pastor, honoring your pastors, honoring your parents. This is, I'm going to break a lot of myth, especially where this hero worship thing, because it's part of the things that's going on where people say, oh, the pastors are just hero worship. And, and while I understand the extreme, because I've seen things too. I've told you before, when I was on campus, one of the reasons why I never wanted to be a pastor, I saw a man of God coming to preach. We were no more than, if the people that were there, they were not up to 30. And he came with 14 protocols. One soul, 14 protocols. One person carried Bible, one person carried handkerchief. The only thing they did not carry was his leg and his heart. I said, what is going on here? 14 protocols, one man of God. What is going on here? When God wants to school in honor, I talked about the story one time. A man of God, you know, when you go to a place, you better humble yourself. That's what the Bible says. If they don't put you in front, don't go and sit there. The man came, bishop with collar neck, because he was a big man of God. He entered there, came to sit in front. The boys have planned for him already. They said, no problem. We're going to school this man in honor today. You know what they did for him? They told the ushers to go and put rows, three rows in front of him. They did not tell him to stand up. Oh. That's how God school people in honor sometimes. It's, they just put three rows in front of him. Then they started filling the row from the front. The very unlikely people that should not sit in front, they now told those ones to go and sit in front. So the bishop was on the fourth row. While people that are just people that were walking past that just came to the service were on the first row, seated on the first chair. When God wants to school you in honor, he does that sometimes. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the scripture. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Egyptian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Next verse. And they were correct. They were actually correct. I don't want to go into all of this, but anyway. And so they said, as the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses, has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Did you see that? They were having a joint conversation. And the Bible says, and the Lord heard it. They didn't invite God to the conversation, but he heard it. This is called spiritual. He's dropping. He's dropping. And the Lord heard it. How many of your conversations are, are the Lord hearing it? Ah, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk, because we open up today. Look at the next verse. Look at what happened there. And now the man Moses was very humble. More than all men were on the face of the earth. Next verse. The Bible says, Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come outside. You know when God says, come outside. Like that. <laughs> you remember? Mortal combat. He said, come over here. You know that one is finishing. So imagine God just stand like this. Then say, uh, uh, Laddie, come. Come outside. We are outside with God. <laughs> You know there's problem. <laughs> I wonder how they even came. Because if I was the one from out from that inside, I'd be saying, "Please, Sam, please, Sam, don't let me come." You know when your parents want to beat you now? They say, "Come." They say, "Mommy, please, mommy, please." I say, "Come." You would say, "Please," until they are, they will start laughing too. Has that happened to you before? Stubborn people. You know. <laughs> you know I used to get your mom now. Praise the Lord. Let me crack you guys a little bit. I remember very vividly. It was on Friday. I was remembering this, and I was laughing alone by myself. When I was in secondary school, there's this lecturer that used to beat us like this. Then I used to pray for him that he would live long. Then. So, you know now, some of you put um, um, notepad at your back. And then there's one girl that you never married that you'll be eyeing somehow. So you don't want to cry. You know, Mr. Show looks like no one. 
You know, you know, everybody has that person in their school. Let's learn this. They are still rolling the cano. Miss Sean, she, you look like that, because I know. <laughs> there's some of us who just come like this. You know, there's one girl now. One girl that we are eyeing. Bo! 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 That dust stands on. Bo! Bo! So this day, I used to dust. So I go, Bo! 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 So it's like that lecture rash. <laughs> that this guy, I will show you today. So he gave me three, yeah? By the fourth one, child abuse. Neck. Oh, I shot it. Yeah! <laughs> you know, you know, there's a way they will flog you. The thing that will come out of your mouth is Jarastafari. You know, you will not know where. <laughs> oh, Lord. So God, in this case, said, "Come out." <laughs> so I believe that Miriam will be doing like this as she was coming out. Aaron will be the duster. Say, how many can God won't take beat us now? No shaking. We did here. So let's go to the next verse. Verse 4, verse 5. I'll close with this. Verse 5. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood. <laughs> See, serious matter. You know, you know why God did this thing? If you read Genesis chapter 1, the moment there was a revival, the serpent came. Somebody has asked before that, how come? Ananias and Sapphira died in Acts chapter 5. Because you see, the moment there is a revival, something is brewing in your life. The serpent must show up. So this revival in Acts chapter 2 was just growing and brewing. And then all of a sudden, lies was about to set in to create a system of dishonor such as occurred in Genesis chapter 2. And God said, this cannot happen. I have to create a norm to numb the system, people must see something grievous to know that look, you cannot do this here. So that's why that thing happened there. It was a loud statement. Everybody had to comport themselves. So in this case again, a revival was going on. And this time around it was against authority. The moment one person brews it, um, Miriam is, finds a way out of the situation, it's going to continue to spread. So this was what God said. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle. Listen. In the door of the tabernacle, if you read the scriptures very well, particularly Exodus, you see that whenever God wants to meet with the children of Israel, all right, he would meet them at the door of the tabernacle. The children of Israel would be at the tent of the meeting. The tent of the meeting is usually far away from the um, the, the tabernacle. In other words, if you want to go to the tabernacle, there has to be a sense of pursuit. Are you getting what I'm saying there? That's where, you know, where we say, you know, pursue God and all. That's where it comes from because, you see, for them to go and truly want to know and meet God, they have to leave the tent all the way to the tabernacle. It's a very far distance. So God was waiting at the tent, the tabernacle. And so, in other words, they were at the tent of meetings. So he came out and was waiting at the door of the tabernacle and called Me Mo Aaron and Miriam and they both went forward. Let's assume the people at the tent of meeting they were looking at the field. Hey, mommy will beat daddy today. No, no, mommy should not be daddy. Oh, daddy will beat mommy to no, mommy should not, daddy should not beat daddy. Daddy will beat uh, my sister today. So that's what's going on there. Next verse, quickly. Then he said, Yet now my words. If there is a prophet amongst you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Next verse. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Next verse. I speak with him face to face. God started to raise the profile of Moses. Moses was not involved himself. Oh. Moses did not say speak for himself. God was the one now reading the profile of Moses. Even plainly and not in the dark. This is Moses that has killed somebody before.
not even the dark say, and it sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid? <laughs> it even says you are not afraid of me. You know, as I'm teaching this thing, some people are still struggling with it. You know why? Because of the many things you've seen online that is attacking that concept of honor. You know what is going on with many people? You actually have a problem with authority and it has nothing to do with church. It's actually a growing up mentality of how you were raised. Remember what I said? Every adulthood problem is an unresolved childhood issues. So as you are hearing this honor thing, you are conflicted. Like, no, why, why, would, they, why would God do well? Now you are giving excuse in your mind that, well, this is Moses that is anointed. Touch not on my thought. So it's for the people that are anointed. It's for authority. I will show you next week where the Bible talks about authority. Honoring all men in authority. Jesus said, what should we do? He said, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. There is a Caesar. Think about it. Jesus would have died an untimely death if he said, give everything to me. Then he will know that the, I, I'm telling you the truth. He will know that there is a Caesar that decrees and declares and dictates who dies or who lives. What did he take him for? What, what did Pilate take? For him to say, kill out the firstborn. What did it take? When Jesus was being, when Jesus was born, above two years, what, what did it take? It was just a decree. And it stood. In fact, God did not go against it. God had to find a way to get Joseph out of Egypt, out of that, um, Israel, so that Moses, um, what's his name, um, himself and Mary would be preserved. He didn't stop it. He couldn't stop it. Because God, if he tries to stop it, he will be going against the law of will. Every man has a will. And God respects that. I present to you life and death. Choose life. Your decision. So look at what God said here. He said, and he sees the form of the Lord. He says, why then are you not afraid? Say, you, know, you know even the fear to speak against my servant Moses. Look at the next thing God did here. Watch this. So the anger of the Lord was arose against them and he departed. Ha. <laughs> he said, excuse her, please don't go. He did not give a judgment. He only just brought what they did to them. And he walked away. Look at that. You are not afraid and he walked away. If the creator of the universe says you are not afraid and he walks away, what will you do? You better follow. You better be chasing him. Where you pass, so, oh yeah, Aaron, you go like this. Me, go like this. Anyone that finds him first. Look at the next verse. Verse 10. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous. As white as snow. Then Aaron turned towards Miriam and there she was a leper. Have you asked yourself, how come nothing happened to Aaron? Abby, do you want to know why? I'll show you next week. But let me just say this. Thank you. You know, I said something earlier that spiritual things are very powerful. Very powerful. Are you aware, please listen to this, that Aaron sacrificed his life to follow Moses. And now Aaron was in the order of the Levitical, was in the Levitical order. It was a Levite. That's why the Bible says the beard, the oil will flow from the beard, from the top of Aaron to this beard all the way down to his garment. In other words, Aaron had, listen, there are certain individuals by the reason of their consolidation with the court. There are certain excuses and exemptions that occur for them sometimes. When you use yourself in that their place, because in the grand scheme of things, if you think about it, Aaron was not supposed to be a part of the liberation of the children of Israel. Moses invited him. I will not do this prophetic assignment until you bring Aaron on board. In other words, by the reason of that divine association, do you know that God also now empowered Aaron? 
he says you are now going to be a prophet to him and he is going to be a god to you Moses there so in other words in the sight of God Moses was the chief host of the things that had to happen to the children of Israel but Aaron too played a critical role in that and the priestly oil was upon Aaron's body upon his head looking at that very carefully there were certain exemptions that happened to Aaron even though eventually if you read all the way down to the scriptures you see that he eventually paid for it because there were series of dishonor in the life of Aaron why because Aaron thought by the reason of my placement I stayed they said you should come and be a voice now I've come a voice then he forgot that they brought you in to come and eat you cannot tell them how to eat Listen to this very critically. He got there. Moses went to the top to go and bring the mountain of um, the the mount of um, the, the the Ten Commandments. Just in a moment of the leadership exemption, he took the role of the leader. Moses is staying longer. The people are complaining. Let us make a golden calf. Decisions. If you read all the way down, go and study this thing when you get back home. You will see that eventually Aaron paid paid the price for this thing. Dishonor is your failure to esteem to discern and to regard a person, a grace an individual and it will cost you in your journey rise on your feet everybody were you blessed? Were you blessed? Yes, sir. This morning, I just want you to ask God for just three minutes. That if there is any door that is shut in my life because of dishonor, Spirit of the living God, move and open that door back. Just pray that simple prayer, everybody. Quickly. Tell the Lord that from today I set a guard against the door of my mouth. Praise to the Lord, I set a guard against the door of my mouth. Husbands, honor your wife. Wife, honor your husbands. Don't, don't look at someone and just because there is some familiarity, you speak rudely, you speak anyhow, honor one another. Honor your coach. Honor your gym instructor. Honor your colleague at work. Honor your friend. Honor your pastors. I'm going to talk deep on that one next week, Sunday. Honor your bosses. Honor has a voice. Look out for it. The voice is found in your regard. The voice is found in your gifts. The voice is found in your submission. Honor has a voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please look at me, everybody. Let me say this here. There is a concept of council culture that subconsciously entered into the fiber of society that has caused the loudest noise of dishonor in the generation. And once the council culture becomes embedded into the vocabulary of a generation, what then happens is that everything that should be heightened will get cancelled because of the low esteem of the reason and the drive to always want to cancel something. Now, do you know that there are things that should not even be cancelled just because there is a cultural council 
and a council culture, you must find something after one week, two weeks, there's silence online. You must find something to cancel. There is another spirit in operation that acts that thing to move the way it's moving. It is constantly trying to ensure that the, the, the system, the fiber of a, of a system in a nation or a society is constantly at risk because of a group of people who want to constantly cancel any opportunity they have to cancel things. You see it in church. You see it to the government. You see it everywhere. You see it at work. You see it anywhere. Even conversations that should be family conversation is now brought online to be settled. Why? Because of this concept of let us cancel everything, let us scatter everything. So if I want to get my family to act quickly and I want to get them into obedience quickly, once I go online, because they don't want problem online, as I say it online, people will join me. Even people who don't know anything about your upbringing will now be advising your mother, your father, your sister, your uncle and be judging your matter online. Now they are TV presenters and radio show hosts that has now commanded themselves to be the judge whereby bring them to my platform let me now create opportunity for everybody to talk then I become the judge God is the judge of the earth listen as little as all these things are they are creating a system in people's minds whereby the way you can get justice and judgment is not from anybody but from God but what the condition is going on there is that the moment you want to get justice and, God, uh, and, 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 and justice what you need to do is go online speak about it people will fall you or against you and through that you get your justice but the justice is something that makes you feel good in your soul it is really not a justice in itself it's something that just makes you feel good in your soul and the moment the devil can get you to feel good it can get all the destiny of your life in your hands because of a feel good moment ask it so and you understand what i'm saying god bless you everybody <laughs>
Father, we give you praise. Media, please give me James chapter 1, verse 21. It just helps somebody here to receive. Walk him. It says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with what? I can't hear you, church. Receive with what? Meekness. The implanted word of God, which is able to what? Save your souls. The word that has come out here this morning is able to save your souls. Don't take it lightly. As you step out of this place today, ask God to reveal to you. Show me. Show me where I need to make adjustments in my life. Hallelujah. Was somebody truly blessed by that word? One more time, can you give Jesus a big shout? Can we jam our hands together for him this morning? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, you can have your seat. Let's get our offerings. Um, let's get ready to sow our seeds. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hands. The ushers will give you one. If not, um, the account details will be on the screen. If you're online also and you like to give, the details will be on your screen also. And you can, you know, sow your seed. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of what? All your crops. It says, Then your bands will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Hallelujah. It says, Honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Honor the Lord, just like Pierce has taught us this morning. It's, it's honor gives you access. It says, Honor the Lord with all that you have and the first fruit of your increase. Hallelujah. So, one of the ways that we honor Him is also by giving to Him. We acknowledge Him as God, we acknowledge His sovereignty as God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, this morning, let's give our offerings. Amen. If you've been truly blessed by that word, you know, um, you would, your heart will be in a state when you're asking God, Lord, I just truly want to surrender my life to you. I want to live according to your dictates. Hallelujah. So you can sow your seeds this morning. Again, the account details are right on the screen. If you're online also, the account details will be on your screen and you can sow generously this morning. And let's honor God together, you know, with our seed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let me give you 20 more seconds to do that in case you're still trying to get a hold of the account details. It's right on the screen, I imagine, and online also. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father, for this word. All right, lift your hands to heaven and begin to speak. And first, I want you to thank God for the word that has come out today because it's a sign of God's love and a sign of God's mercy unto us as a people, as a church. So lift your hands and begin to speak and decree and declare over your seed. Speak a word like we usually say. Speak a word. There's a word that is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Decree over it. Decree over it. Decree over it. Remember, where the word of a king is, there is power. So as you speak, you're not just speaking. You're speaking. Your words have power. Hallelujah. And as you're speaking, you're watching your seed. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we receive your word today as a sign of your love and your mercy to us. Lord, in response, we give unto you as a sign of honor in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, please help me welcome. We're just going to take the announcements very quickly. Please help me welcome Chibu Kim and um, Dr. JP. Hallelujah. Please can you jam your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How was that word? Awesome. Praise God. Please, can you put your hands together for my lovely JP? Amen. All right. All right. Praise God. Good morning, church. How was the word? Hallelujah. Please, let's say thank you, P.S. I said, we love you, P.S. All right, praise God. Honor is, I mean, the law of receiving. Praise God. That was very powerful. So be sharing the announcement with us this morning. And I want us to, I mean, just pay attention to these very important announcements. So how many of us have been a part of Well Wind of Testimonies? 
Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, it has been so powerful, right? And it will be continuing tomorrow, tomorrow morning on YouTube, 7 a.m. So if you've not been joining, I'd like to encourage each and every one of us to be a part of it. Also, share the link with your friends, share the link with your colleagues. Just, I mean, share it across all your social media platforms. But please be on the lookout tomorrow morning by 7 a.m. We'll be having well window testimonies with Pierce. All right. And we have our teaching series continues, Tongues and Tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How to chart the course of your life. Praise God. How many of us have been instructed by it? How many of us? Amen. And you can't miss Wednesday. Amen. How many of you are making a commitment to be around this Wednesday here? Amen. 7 p.m. Amen. And we also have um, Global Gethsemane by 6.30 p.m. Um, on the mainland on Tuesday. And please, if you can connect, please ensure that you connect, you know, via YouTube online. Amen. Um, please ensure that this season you do not miss the word. Amen. You must be plugged in continuously. Every word that comes forth from this pulpit, God has specially designed it for you for this season. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So on Wednesday, we have our Get some, get some money here on the island, and on Tuesday, we have it on the mainland. Global Get Some Money, 6.30 p.m. Amen. Ensure that you are plugged in all through. Praise God. Hallelujah. So in the same vein, right, we'll be having 30 days of, I mean, some of us have been joining, 30 days of supernatural discipleship with Dr. K. So tonight's zone is going to be 9 p.m. on um, Instagram, right, at Dr. K Live. But subsequently, that would be 1 p.m. West African time at Dr. K Live on Instagram. So let's just always tune in. You can set an alarm, right? Just set a reminder, just in case you get busy in the midst of or during the course of work so that you're also able to be a part of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the opportunities for us to plug in to serve God here, uh, we have opportunities in the Amplified team, that is the sound team at the back. Sound team, can you just give us a... Yeah. And then we also have Interfila, that's the prayer team. Amen. We have also in the Herald's team as well. We have with the Elites and Resonance and also the Facility team too as well. So I want you to, if you are interested in plugging in, you know, we are safe to serve. Amen. Amen. So if you are interested to serve in God's house, I want you to either see me or see JP after service. I will just plug you to the um, available service team. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So we talked about communities, right? We know we're big on communities in the new... All right, thank you. And we have different communities, so I'm just going to, you know, talk, tell us about them. We have the Business and Career Network. How many of us remember the last two sessions that we've had? Love it, celebrate. So we've been having very beautiful sessions, right, on Saturday. That's from the Business and Career Network, and there's still more to come. And we also have, I mean, tribes. We have Greater Lekki. We have Lekki and we also have our mainland tribes. So if you're looking to join a tribe, if you don't belong to any tribe, like I just said, you can reach out to either of us so that we can plug you into your own tribes. So in the same vein, we have the men's community. We have the women's community. Make it louder, make it louder. We have the men's community. All right. We have the women's community. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, and like we've announced earlier, right? So, on the 20th of April, women will be having an hangout. <laughs> Finally, we've been looking forward to it. So, there's a registration link. I know we've not announced that previously, but please take note. So, there's a QR code right on the screen now that you can just quickly scan so that we can adequately plan and prepare for you. You know, our own has to be louder, right? The men had an amazing time, but women, we take it up higher. So, please register quickly, right? Bring out your phones, scan the QR code, and register. So, we talk about the men's community, the women's community, right? We talk about the tribes. Um, Married community, we have Married the singles. communities and singles. Yes, yeah, singles. We had our hang out last week, and I mean, let's let's celebrate everyone that was part of that and that organized that. Yes, yeah, so please don't be alone. Don't do life alone. That's the importance of all of yeah, these communities. Yeah, please yeah, don't do life alone. We are not created to go through life alone. Amen. Amen. Please ensure you plug in to a community. Ensure you plug in to a community. Please see either of us if you are not in any community. Or you don't know where you need, to, where you want to belong, or where you have to belong. Please just see either of us, and then we'll just 
um, lead you to the right person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Someone say one soul, one disciple. So I can disciple. hear you. Make it louder. One soul, one disciple. One soul, one disciple. Shout it louder. One soul, one disciple. One soul, one disciple. Amen. In this season, we're bringing one person, one soul. We're winning one soul. It's a campaign that we're running throughout the entire year. We're winning one soul, and we're raising that soul to become a disciple and to be planted in church. Amen. 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 How many of us, is anyone here that has, that has done that? Can I just see a show of hands? Thank you, Pastor Obi. Thank you. Thank you, P.S. Can I see a show of hands? Amen. So Amen. we're running that campaign all through the year. It's something you need to plug into. Amen. 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 And we have all year to do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah, so in the new, right, we're very big on training, just ensuring that you're being grounded in the word and you're growing in the word, growing also in your leadership. So to that effect, right, if you've not been a uh, part of Roots, so Roots is a pivotal discipleship training that you go through right in the new. And if you've not gone through that, there's a new cohort that is starting this Sunday. Sorry? Formations. Foundations. foundations, okay. So we have foundations. We have foundations starting on Sunday, right? Okay, that's April 14th. And then we have advance as well starting on 13th of this month right that's on saturday so if you have questions about registering either for roots so if you've gone through foundations rather you'd i mean go through to advance so if you have questions about either of them please see the kimbusaya the kimbusaya can you raise up your hand yes thank you that's the kimbusaya there so see him after service so that you can be a part of either of these um sessions right or cohorts amen hallelujah amen. So marriage, if you, uh, you want to get married here in church, we have how we go about it. Please, six months before you get married, please, you need to send a mail to haven at wearethenew.org. Amen. Amen. Haven at wearethenew.org. Um, we also like you to follow us on all our social media platforms. Um, on IG, we are the new underscore island. Um, on Twitter, um, we are the new at the new underscore island. Facebook, we're on Facebook. Uh, we, please, we also encourage you to follow our pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Shola, on social media. On IG is Okodua Oli Shola, and on Twitter is Shola Okodua. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah. So now this is my favorite part. Somebody should ask me why. Okay. We have a very special set of people in our midst, right? Everything that we did here today, we did it for them, just so that, I mean, they can feel at home and get to experience the new. So I want also, with that love, with that Jesus joy, with that energy and vibrance of youthfulness that we have, let's put our hands together and welcome our first timer. So please, we have if this is your first time, please just do a show of hands, put up your hands and then let's welcome you. A high five. We have somebody there also as well. So it's your first time. Please, please the show of hands. Well. Please put up your hands and let's welcome them. Thank you. Welcome them very thank warmly. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you so much for coming. So please, at the end of service, right, we've already prepared a brief reception for you. So just to my left hand side at the back. Please come to the back and then we would welcome you further. So thank you again. Remember to, I mean, take note of the announcements and the information that we've shared. And we look forward to us again. Yes, sir, please come forward, sir. Let's welcome PL. Come put please stand on your feet and yes, get and welcome. Hallelujah. Can we jam our hands together for them? Hallelujah. All right, media, please, can I have the video very quickly? Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you. Please, you can have your seat. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Shola Okodua. For the past two years... Hi there. My name is Shola Okodua. For the past two years, the Lord has put in our heart to go to the city of Abuja to begin a new work for Him. And for the past two years, we've been praying, strategizing, and believing God for this mighty wind of harvest. Sometimes last year, we were in the city of Abuja with our partners, friends, and workers who are putting their hearts you know, to be a part of this mighty work. And guess what? In the month of April, I will be back again in Abuja to have a special meeting, a special retreat with people who have shown interest to be a part of what God wants to do 
in the city of Abuja. So if you want to be a part of this, the link will right here be on the screen. You want to register, you want to be a part of this meeting, particularly for us to go in some time of worship, prayer, praises, and intensity of the word. You don't want to miss it for everything. I look forward to meeting you and seeing you. God bless you. And bye for now. Amen. All right. Now, if you think about it, you would most, at least you will know somebody in Abuja. Amen. Even if you don't know anybody, at least you know the president. Amen. You can send him an invite. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Um, this has been, you know, um, coming and it's finally here. Someone say it's finally here. Amen. All right. So um, we have the Abuja retreat. Pierce is going to be in Abuja on um, April 20th. Amen. All right. So think of the so many people that you know in Abuja, especially those who do not have a church, you know, those who are looking for something new, those who want to you know, just plug into something fresh. All right. Um, this is for them. As many people, as you know, live in the city of Abuja, it is time, you know, to bring them on board. Hallelujah. The new, we're having a retreat and Pierce is going to be live and direct in the city of Abuja. How can you ensure that, you know, those that you know are part of this? Number one, send them the link. If you didn't get the link, um, all right. If you can help me with that link, it's bit.ly forward slash the new retreat Abuja, right? Um, and all you need to do is send in that link. But I also encourage you to actually register for them. Amen. All right. Register for them. If you're online also and you can hear this, please, if you know, and if you're in Abuja, right, and if you're watching from Abuja this morning, this is for you. All right. Um, April 20th, more details will be communicated. We just need you to register. The link to register will be in the comment section. All you need to just do is click it and fill in your details. And to everyone here live, um, we love you to please register, help them register, send them the link, but you can go a step further to register, you know, for them, and then we'll get in touch with them. Is somebody excited about what God is doing in the new? I can't hear you. Don't sound excited. Is somebody excited about what God is doing in the new? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right, just to reiterate again, in this season, make sure you stay in the word. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay in the word. Every message that comes out of this church, out of this house, is specially curated for you. And I want to employ everyone this, this week again. We've just heard a powerful teaching. All right. Um, and just like you've heard over and over again, everything you thought you heard, you didn't hear it. Amen. There are certain things you thought you heard, but, you know, you pr probably didn't stick in your heart the way it ought to. Hallelujah. But what happens when we go back again to listen, it just gets clearer and it's in our forefront. Amen. So I want to implore everyone, you know, um, from tongue and tongue to the, you know, message of honor today and every other one to come and everyone that has been preached in the last few weeks and, you know, in fact, for the year. Amen. All right, um, you, want to, you want to stay grounded, you want to stay rooted, you know, listening to our senior pastor over and over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in this season, you know, midweek, we're talking about tongue and tongues. And so, if you rise up on our feet, because this service isn't ended yet. This service isn't over if we have not declared words over our lives. Hallelujah. Is somebody ready to de declare with me this morning? Is somebody ready to declare with me this morning? So we're going to take those confessions again as we close service before we take our creed. Hallelujah. May they please help me. Glory be to God. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? All right, one, two, three, let's go. In the name of Jesus, today I decree concerning every area of my life, I will produce and I'm fruitful. From today, I multiply and experience a testimony of explosion. The hand of God is upon my life, and I experience accelerated growth in all aspects of my life. I'm divinely assisted and marvelously helped by God, and my life experiences exponential explosion. The wind of testimony. In the name of Jesus, the beauty of God is upon my life. It causes me to be favored and attractive. And the works of my hands are established. I have entered into a season of fatness. And I am robust. My business, career, finances are robust. Everything that is due to me has come to me now. 
in the name of Jesus. I am fat and flourishing in the name of Jesus. The attention of God is upon me. The spotlight of God is upon my life. I am a city set upon a hill and I cannot be hidden. My potentials, gifts, business, career, and graces are visible. I cannot be hidden by the Spirit. I enter into divine opportunities and I'm set up for divine upliftment. I'm reshuffled for elevation, manifestation, and expansion. In the name of Jesus, I lay hold of what is mine at every season of my life. I resist every opposition and condemn every voice of manipulation in my life. And I step fully into the plans and purposes of God for my life. Where my life and destiny is concerned, I'm divinely preserved and protected. As a son, I experience divine direction and I do not go where grace has not led me. The shield of protection is around me and all that concerns me concerning my family, business, career, finances, relationships. I announce a no-flight zone for every farm of flies in the name of Jesus. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Christ. I am marked. Business and all that concerns me is marked. The season I enjoy angelic assistance in all my endeavors. My angels are on guard at all times and I'm heavily defended. Nothing around me is permitted to break down. In the season, I'm unleashed to fly. Every snare is broken and I have escaped from today. I wear a robe of royalty and I'm beautified by grace. I come into a season of unprecedented opportunities and growth. A season of uncommon results, massive harvest, and household blessing. The spirit of favor is highlighted over me and my household in the name of Jesus. I decree that angels are dispersed to bring these words to pass and make them my reality. I declare that I'm blessed. The blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow is upon me. The blessing is in me, on me, and round about me. The blessing is activated in my going out and in my coming in and all that I'm about. Hence, the blessing causes me to prosper. From today, the well-being of opportunities, open doors, financial increase, healing, breakthrough, testimonies has been blown in my direction. My testimony is now, my set time is now, and I rejoice! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, can we take a breath one more time today as we leave? One, two, three, and go. I am the new. And I have no taste for man religion without change. I live a result-oriented, purpose-driven life based on the principles in God's word. I'm a man of the word, yielded to the spirit, and committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place in God's supernatural army and his agenda for the earth and my generation. I bring great joy. Come on, shout it out loud. As sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory. Shout it out. I am the new and I love this church. God bless you and have a blessed week ahead. See you on Tuesday at Global Gets My Name for Tongue and Tongues. God bless you.